But in your 33 years as a Foreign Service officer, have you ever heard of a President of the United States recalling another ambassador without cause based on allegations that the State Department itself knew to be false? No. Now, you testified in your opening statement that you had left Ukraine by the time of the July 25th call between President Trump and President Zelensky. When was the first time that you saw the call record for this phone call? When it was released publicly at the end of September, I believe. And prior to reading that call record, were you aware that President Trump had specifically made reference to you in that call? No. What was your reaction to learning that? I was shocked. Absolutely shocked and, and devastated, frankly. What do you mean by devastated? I was shocked and devastated that um, I would feature in a phone call between two heads of state uh, in such a manner uh, where um, President Trump said that I was bad news to another world leader uh, and that I would be going through some things. Um, so I was, it, it was, it was a terrible moment. Uh, a person who saw me actually reading the transcript said that the color drained from my face. I think I even had a physical reaction. Um, I, I think, you know, even now words kind of fail me. Well, uh, without upsetting you too much, I'd like to show you the excerpts um, from the call. And the first one, where President Trump says that <clears throat> the former ambassador from the United States, the woman, was bad news, and the people she was dealing with in the Ukraine were bad news. So I just want to let you know. What was your reaction when you heard the President of the United States refer to you as bad news? I couldn't believe it. I mean, again, shocked, appalled, devastated that um, the President of the United States would talk about any ambassador uh, like that um, to a foreign uh, head of state. <laughs> and it was me. I mean, I couldn't believe it. The next excerpt, when the pre President references you, <clears throat> was a short one. But he said, well, she's going to go through some things. What did you think when President Trump told President Zelensky and you read that you were going to go through some things? I didn't know what to think, um, but I was very concerned. What were you concerned about? She's going to go through some things. It didn't sound good. It sounded like a threat. Did you feel threatened? I did. How so? I didn't know exactly. It's not, you know, a very precise phrase, but I think um, it, it, it didn't feel like I was, uh, I really don't know how, how to answer the question any further except to say that uh, it kind of felt like a vague threat. And so I wondered what that meant. It concerned me. Now, in this same call where the president, as you just said, threatens you to a foreign leader, he also pra pra praises, rather, the corrupt Ukrainian prosecutor who led the false smear campaign against you. I want to show you another excerpt or two from the transcript, or the call record, rather, where the president of the United States says, good, because I heard you had a prosecutor who was very good and he was shut down and that's really unfair. A lot of people are talking about that. The way they shut your very good prosecutor down and you had some very bad people involved. And he went on later to say, I heard the prosecutor was treated very badly and he was a very fair prosecutor. So good luck with everything. Now, Ambassador Ivanovich, after nearly three years in Ukraine where you tried to clean up the Prosecutor General's office, 
Was it the U.S. Embassy's view that the former prosecutor general was a very good and very fair prosecutor? No, it was not. And in fact, he was rather corrupt, is that right? That was our belief. The prosecutor general's office is a long-running problem in Ukraine, is that right? Yes. So how did you feel when you heard President Trump speak so highly of the corrupt Ukrainian prosecutor who helped to execute the smear campaign to have you removed? Well, it was, it was disappointing. It was concerning. Um, it wasn't certainly based on anything that the State Department would have reported or, frankly, anybody else in the U.S. government. Uh, there was a, an interagency consensus that while uh, when Mr. Lutsenko came into office, we were very hopeful that he would actually do the things that he said he would set out to do, including uh, reforming the Prosecutor General's office, uh, but that did not materialize. So this was not the uniform position of the official U.S. policymakers, is that right? Right.